Hi, Andrew McNair here. I get asked a lot of questions about tithing. Let's cover one today. Can I pay my tithe with a credit card? That's what I want us to look at today. Is tithing with a credit card a wise thing to do? You might even ask, isn't it better than not tithing at all? I'll be upfront with you. If you're tithing by going into debt, that is careless. So why is it wrong to give with your credit card? That's what we're gonna cover in this video today. We're gonna look at what the Bible says about giving on a credit card or going into debt to do your tithing. First, you're not giving your first fruits to the Lord. Exodus 23, 19 says, the best of the first fruits of your ground you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. By tithing with a credit card, you are not giving your first fruits, but your last fruits. It would be like having a farm and after it was picked clean that you were giving your last fruits that had fallen on the ground. Why is this? Because you're typically not making the credit card payment until your next credit cycle date. So you're not actually paying your tithe until weeks down the road. And that's assuming you're making the whole payment and not just the minimum payment. If you're making the minimum payment, then you're actually paying your tithes months and sometimes years after you have approved that transaction. That's the last fruits. You're giving your first fruits to the desires of your own heart. Now you may say, well, I have financial situations and I can't give. Then again, you need to go through our formula 10, 20, and 70 and figure out where you're spending your money. The second reason you shouldn't tithe with a credit card is, is that you're going into debt to give to God. Paying your tithe with a credit card means you're likely making the monthly payment each month. So you're paying on interest the money you tithe. By the using a credit card, you're avoiding having to face the issue of spending more than you make, which you justify by saying, well, I'm tithing. And in reality, you're going into debt. You're buying things on borrowed time. I loved when my grandfather taught me that that's how they used to refer to debt is buying things on time. You're spending God's money, which should have been first given to him in the first place. So why is this so serious to God? Why is it an offense to God? Proverbs 22, seven says the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is the slave to the lender. This says that the poor will be ruled by the rich until they act shrewdly and steer clear of debt. No one wants to be a slave, yet you will find yourselves enslaved if you are in debt. This passage has special meaning to its original audience. The Israelites in that day could remember that their grandfathers and their fathers had went through slavery and they never forgot the slavery and the consequences of those slavery. You don't forget your slavery. If you've been in debt, you are now debt free. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You don't want to go back to those days. So it's important that you reflect on the burden that debt had on you and your family. Reflect on the pain of not being in control of your finances. Remind yourself that you found yourself in debt because of your own decisions, your lack of money management and your desire for instant gratification. You don't forget your bondage. Debt is bondage and debt is dangerous. And that's why we have to be very careful with any forms of debt. Now, with that being said, God doesn't want you going into debt to tithe. Does that mean you shouldn't be tithing at all? No, there are some other alternatives we'll cover in just a minute. Third, tithing with a credit card can cost your church additional convenience fees. Those conditional convenience fees can add up. Let's just say best case scenario, that you're putting your tithe on your credit card out of pure convenience. You're not in debt. You're just doing it so you can get some reward points, which I understand. So you pay the balance off each and every month and it's not costing you any money. But that doesn't mean that it's not costing your church any money. It could be costing your church upwards of two to five percent in convenience fees and that they have to pay that out to the credit card companies. This means you're shortchanging your church on the amount of the money that you give to them as your tithe. Every time you tithe with your credit card, your church isn't getting the full benefit of your tithe. Five percent or two percent might not seem like a lot to you at first, but if you actually tithe thousands of dollars each year, 
that can add up to hundreds of dollars that the church could be using for ministry purposes. They could be using it for gospel conversations to be happening in your community or across the globe, but it went to fees instead. Before we close out today, let's look at some alternatives. Let's say you're using your credit card just because it's convenient. I'll let you in on a secret that there are several other options that give your tithe where you can do it automatically and set it and forget it. One of those easy ways is to do it through bill pay, which most banks and credit unions offer as a free service on their app. The bill pay service will send your check to the church via electronic transfer or sending a paper check to them. Now, I encourage you, don't set it and forget it completely. You should be praying over your tithes that it goes to gospel conversations and furthering the kingdom. Another way is to set up electronic payments through your church's website or app. Many churches allow for them to put your account number and your routing number in to take it directly out of your checking account. The other strategy that you can use is to actually have it through your pay stub, taking it directly out of your paycheck. And that will put it on automatic so that it comes out of the gross income of your check. So that way you're not tithing on the net income, you're actually tithing on your gross income, which we talked about in another video. To wrap up, God doesn't want you to be weighed down and enslaved to credit card debt. He wants you to have him first in your life, in every area of your life. Of course, money is one of those areas you need to put God first in. Ultimately, God wants you to have a heart that says, I'm not buying more things I don't need. I need more of you, God. Besides, what can a slave do? Nothing without the lender's or master's permission. So how can you live for God if you're enslaved to debt? And that is, again, a video for another day. You wouldn't go out and take out a loan just to give to your tithe. But in fact, that's what you're doing if you're giving via a credit card. So be very careful with settling for convenience when you could be giving more to your church by just taking a few extra steps. If you want to learn more about my journey, my own path from greedy to generosity, you can check out my new book, The Giving Crisis, which you can find by clicking the link below to get a copy of the book today. I want to encourage you to check out our podcast, Rich, Young, and Powerful, where I introduce you to charities and ministries that maybe you've never heard of by interviewing philanthropists that you would probably enjoy meeting. You can check it out on iTunes and other podcast platforms. Until next time, remember to invest your life into something that will outlive it. Now that's living to give.